So I want to welcome you today. Um, you know, of all the types of videos that I uh, that I uh, post on this channel, I think these are my favourite videos of all. Okay, so I I love sectioning teeth. I'm a bit sad. And I love to show you certain solutions to certain problems. Okay, so you you would you would not believe how many teeth I have to section, and how many teeth I have to prepare, and how many of those teeth fail uh, before getting to this point. And 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 on top of that, to try and find a tooth that has. Uh, a double canal that goes into one is incredibly, incredibly difficult. So, um, but what I would say is that we found uh, a, 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 a double canal uh, in one root that come together was on a lower six. And, uh, you know, if you haven't done enough root canals, if you're new to uh, doing root canal treatments, you would be surprised how many lower sixes have a double canal morphology in one single root. The main learning objective today is to show you how to manage um, this type of problem because, um, you know, you, you, you might find uh, two canal orifices in one root and then you might be thinking to yourself, well, I can get down one uh, canal quite easily, but I can't get down the other canal. And you've got to ask yourself, you know, is this because the tooth is uh, blocked? Have you ledged it? Or is it maybe because uh, two canals are coming together? And one of the challenges is obviously trying to work out if there are two canals that come together. And then there's another challenge in how to sort of manage that endodontically, how to, uh, how to shape that tooth and also how to, um, how, how to obturate and clean. So, so there's, there's the two aspects to this problem and, and today's uh, video is going to show you how to manage this effectively. I think the first thing to mention is that you must irrigate. Okay, so if you're doing root canal, what I want you to do is I want you to uh, irrigate your tooth. Okay, and when I say irrigate, um, I'm using these side venting needles. I'm using sodium hypochlorite. There's no um, other alternative. And what I also like to do is I like to fill the irrigants all the way up to the top, okay? Make sure you've got this kind of sort of bathtub kind of effect. And the first thing we're gonna do once we've uh, accessed the tooth and we've found these two canal orifices, is you're gonna try and negotiate these canal orifices. And in this case, uh, my go-to hand file here is a D-finder. So uh, if, if you're not too sure what these D-finders are like, they're like normal hand files, but um, they have a very, very smooth bore shape, okay? And the great thing about these smooth bore shapes is that um, they slip into really, really tight canals really, really easily. And in this case, you'll notice that um, in, in the buccal canal, the, uh, the, the D finder isn't progressing to the apex like we'd like to. And then obviously I'm gonna sort of try and negotiate down the lingual uh, canal. And this is also getting stuck. So we've got to ask ourselves, why is it getting stuck? Is it because of a ledge or is it calcified? Or is it because the coronal third of the canal hasn't been shaped enough for you to get down uh, to zero? So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna use an orifice opener. And in this case, I'm gonna use a mini cut blackjack. This is a 1505 uh, tapered file, it's short. And the great thing about these blackjacks is the cutting efficiency is insane, okay? So this is this is what you want. What you what you don't want to do is with these orifice openers. You don't you don't want to make sh you don't want to push these orifice openers all the way down the canal. The whole point of these orifice openers is just to open up the coronal third. You'll also notice that it runs at quite a fast speed between 800 and 1,000 RPM. Don't be worried about that. It's perfectly safe. And I'll say again, these mini cut blackjacks are by Plan B. Um, and and they just they just they, do, they work really really well. They also work really really well in uh, MB2 uh, canals as well. And again, make sure you irrigate. You'll notice here that there's bubbles coming up from here. So the the hypochlorite is sort of uh, is 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 acting upon organic uh, material, and it's and it's and it's sort of dissolving everything, and killing everything. And so this is when when you're irrigating, you want to see this kind of bubble effect. It's really 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 nice. 
So once we've opened up the coronal third, I'm gonna try again down the buckle canal with a size 10K file, and it's still getting a little bit stuck. So um, I'm gonna I'm gonna abandon that. I don't wanna push it too far, so I'm gonna just try down the lingual canal, and this is now reaching the apex, okay? So we found out the lingual canal is essentially the main canal. So this is one we're gonna shape first. We're gonna forget about the buckle for now. So we know we've got down the lingual canal and we've got we've reached the apex. So now I'm going to use a glide path file to kind of automate this kind of opening up of the canal space, uh, the zero reading. And I'm using a tooth saver 1403 glide path file here. But this is getting stuck, okay? And the worst thing you do here is you want to push this any further because obviously you'll cause a file fracture. So it's a really, really common problem um, when you have reached zero with your hand file, but then when you place your rotary file to length, it just it feel like it's getting a bit stuck. And um, with the benefit of me sectioning this tooth, the problem we're having in this particular route is that obviously we've got uh, two canals that come together, but when they come together, the portal of exit uh, uh, extends mesially, so it moves uh, in a mesial aspect. So um, when we're trying to uh, shape this tooth, the file, it needs to go around a few sort of bends and things. So a really, really good way of managing this problem is that rather than using your rotary file in the motor, you're gonna take it off the motor, you're gonna make a little small bend in the end, and then you're gonna manually uh, progress this file with your hands, okay? When you're using your hands, you've obviously got more uh, tactile information than you're with if it's stuck on a motor. Once you have put the file um, to the zero uh, length manually, you're then gonna just put the uh, file onto the motor and then you're gonna activate it. And the great thing about this is that you'd think that you'd need to sort of lock the file in place, but actually all you have to do is just put the motor over the file and then activate it and the file will, will work. Another important thing to do is recapitulate. And what I mean by that is you're gonna get a hand file um, back in the same canal and you're going to make sure that it's still open that's really really important obviously you know sometimes when you're using these rotary files they can sort of uh, create debris so always get yourself back in there with a ham file and give it a bit of a clean out so once I feel like I've got the glide path file to zero reading and I've shaped the lingual canal adequately, I'm ready for a higher diameter file. In this case, I'm gonna use a size 20 high flex. And, um, you know, I, I'm, I'm, I'm feeling a bit confident here. So I'm just gonna place the high flex file straight onto the motor and I'm gonna try and, and negotiate this file to length. And you can see here that I can't get quite past that kind of bend in the apical third. In this case, what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna pull the file out. I'm gonna irrigate. Sometimes it's important to uh, recapitulate when you're when you when you getting a bit stuck, because obviously you can create a bit of a ledge and the recapitulation can kind of reopen up that kind of uh, space that you've that you've cleaned cleaned out. You know, sometimes um, the sort of debris can sort of block that tiny little hole where you're gonna get that uh, where you had that glide path file in. So the size 20 high flex isn't getting to length, and I want to use the same. Um, technique that I did with the glide path file. So I'm going to use this manual uh, negotiation technique where I'm going to use the rotary file. I'm going to take it out the motor. I'm going to make a small bend in the end, and then I'm going to manually uh, negotiate this file all the way to zero. And I'm going to place the file back on the motor and then I am gonna activate it. So we've got past that bit where the canal sort of joins and then sort of moves in a mesial direction. And this kind of shapes out that troublesome spot. And you know, uh, confidence is running high. I think to myself that, you know, we've now got a size 20 high flex um, to length and that's all shaped out. I'm now gonna use size 25 high flex. And again, like the all the other rotary files, it hasn't got to length. So again, I say it once again, I say it a thousand times, don't push these files, okay? Because you will break them and you will cause ledge. And any of those two things, it's just gonna just create heartache for you. It's gonna be a bit of a pain in the backside. So just be just be really, really mindful. Try not to push it too much. 
So if you can't get to length of your size 25, you're just gonna drop down a diameter uh, uh, rotary file, and I'm gonna use a size 20 high flex in this case. And rather than using this manual negotiation technique, I'm gonna use uh, the, the file in T mode. So let me explain to you what T mode is. So essentially it is a mode that has two stages. So the first stage is a, a motion of reciprocation or watch winding. So it's kind of a, a very, very sort of slight back and to. And then um, you're gonna use your rotary file with this reciprocation motion and this is gonna kind of slip past the sort of problem area or the ledge that you've created. And then once you slip the file past this problem area, you're gonna press a button and then this turns into a rotary action. And this kind of, this uh, smooths out any kind of sort of blockage or ledge that you've uh, come across in a file. So in this case, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make a small bend at the end with my size 20 high flex file and I'm going to use this reciprocation motion and hopefully this kind of like bend is going to catch into uh, the canal space which we can't get past and then once I get past it as you can see here this now uh, we turn it on to the rotary action mode and that's kind of still shapes out uh, the canal space really nice and easy. So once we've shaped the lingual canal, we're at the point now where we are ready to shape the bulk canal. But what we don't want to do is we don't want to dive straight in at the deep end and get our hand files and get our rotary files down this buccal canal, mainly because obviously you don't want to cause any iatrogenic damage, okay? And you might ask yourself, well, how do I know if uh, the two canals are joining or not? Well, there's the obvious. If you take a CBCT, you can see it on the image. But there are some clinical signs that two canals join. One is obviously you're using a hand file down one canal and it's getting to length and then you're getting a hand file down a different canal and you're getting that kind of stopping feeling and we know that the two canals are in the same route. Another really, really easy sign uh, to know if two canals join or not is that when you are irrigating or aspirating uh, one canal, you can see the other canal is either filling up or emptying at the same time. So that's a really, really common way of knowing if two canals join or not. So one of the, a clinic, one of the uh, very effective clinical ways of working out where the two canals join at what point is that we're gonna uh, place a cone in the lingual canal. We know that that's been shaped adequately and we're gonna push that cone to length. And then we're gonna take a hand file, usually a size 10K file, and we're gonna negotiate the file down up to the point where you feel like you're a bit of a stop, and then you feel for kind of a spongy feeling. And that is essentially where the, uh, the, the hand file is marking uh, the GP point. It's at this point where you wanna uh, just mark the rubber stopper, where you're hitting this spongy feeling. You wanna pull the hand file out, and then you remove the GP, and then you inspect it. And you can see here that the GP has been marked by the hand file. You then take the hand file, you do the measurement at where the rubber stopper was, and this is at the point where they two join. And this is fantastic, because what, what you wanna do now is just shape your normal rotary files up to this point. Now you could negotiate past this, but can you imagine that the, uh, the, the obviously past this has already been shaped via the lingual canal, uh, so you're gonna save time, but also you're gonna make it safer because obviously if you try and negotiate around these tight bends, there's a, you know, there's a high risk of file fracture. So once we've shaped both canals, we're ready for the cone fit radiograph. That's really, really important to do, okay? Because that shows that you've shaped and the obturation is gonna fit to the working length. But you'll notice as we place the, uh, the, the cone fit in the lingual canal, it's got a little bit of a bend on it. So the reason why it's got a bend on it is because remember when we were using the rotary files to, to negotiate them successfully, we had to put a little bend on the end of those files and then we were sort of uh, manually negotiating them into length. It's the same with the GP points. So the GP points, if it was kind of straight, probably wouldn't get around that sort of uh, apical, mesial sort of bend right at the end of this canal. And the problem with GP points is they're not as stiff as hand files or even rotary files. So a really, really good tip here, if you have to keep a bend in a GP point to get it round uh, a tight sort of bend apically, 
is to get a little bit of endo frost. So you're gonna make a little bend in the end of the GP point. You're gonna spray it with endo frost and this is gonna freeze the GP point. Um, with the bend in and then what you can do is you can move this gp point to length and then you're going to place the gp point in the buccal canal and you're going to take your x-ray and already it looks looks really really nice once the comfort radiograph looks great you're going to remove the gp points you're going to put them to one side and disinfect them in sodium hypochlorite and you're ready for your final irrigation protocol my personal irrigation protocol we're going to irrigate with sodium hypochlorite activate we're going to then uh, use uh, edta we're going to then activate that with our ultrasonic tips and then we're going to do a final wash with sodium hypochlorite and activate that again and i like to use my 18th ultra x ultrasonic activator for this very uh, thing and the, the great thing about these ultrasonic activators is it just activates the irrigants and gets rid of all the nastiness that sort of uh, come that's sort of smeared along the the canal walls we're going to do a final uh, dry with a with a with a with a paper point and once we dry it all up you can see here now that the canal spaces look well shaped nice and clean it looks really and then we're ready for our final obturation. In this case, I'm going to use some visco tips uh, uh, connected to my biostromic sealer. In this case, I am using one fill. And, um, you know, as we uh, place these GP points to length, it, this demonstrates and how complicated the internal anatomy of even just one root is. So you can see now that the, the one fill is just uh, flowing into these kind of this lateral anatomy so it just demonstrates here that it isn't just two simple tubes in this route there are two main canals and they're connected uh, by lateral anatomy and the, this this great thing about this bioceramic is it just gets into all the sort of lateral anatomy and it looks absolutely fantastic and overall you know once we fit the GP cones to length we're gonna just very very gently uh, burn off the excess with our heated plugger we're not going to use this heat too far down the canal and then once we have burned off the excess GP that's kind of sticking out we're then going to use our Mac 2 pluggers just to condense uh, the GP points down and this serves a purpose where um, when you're condensing the GP down you're going to be pushing the uh, sealer into all of the kind of dentinal tubules all the kind of little tiny lateral anatomy and things like that and then once you're happy that the obturation is complete we're then going to fill uh, the the cavity with uh, with with a, with a restorative material in this case i'm using uh, scotch bond so this is a self etch uh, uh, bond and then i'm going to use str which is a, a bulk flow composite and overall it's a super super nice result I really, really hope this has uh, helped you today. Um, I really enjoyed making this video. And if you want to um, support the channel, please like and subscribe below. If you have any criticisms, if you would have uh, you know, done this case a little bit differently, please comment section below. We've also got a membership program. The membership program helps obviously to uh, to support the channel but also you have a few little Brucey bonuses there you have early access to content and also as well um, I will respond to your questions with a video short and they go into the membership uh, area so overall thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video bye bye